to give you a background. For 20 some years, my team and I worked for the large manufacturers of aerospace products, people like Honeywell. And for 20 years, 20 years we repaired these parts that Honeywell made. So the customer would come in for the repair, and we would watch the customer walk out in frustration, not wanting to do business with us again, and yet they would come back time and again, simply because there are not very many alternatives out there. Well, just recently, my team and I conceived of some simple changes to the business model and to the technical process of repair that would, in fact, yield some powerful changes from the customer perspective, give the customer real access to an alternative, and, in fact, save them hundreds of thousands of dollars. And my team and I, therefore, formed the corporation to um, actually affect that solution. So who are we? We're Qualified Technologies. We are a repair center. We repair aircraft-based components. We specialize in environmental control systems, similar to the air conditioner on your car. Uh, we are approved by the uh, European FAA, as well as the local FAA. We work on just about any kind of aircraft that includes military. This is uh, perhaps not as easy to see in the back, but uh, this is a uh, picture showing the uh, large quantity of environmental control parts that are on the aircraft. On the bottom there are pictures of some of the, uh, some specific components. And underneath there is the addressable market for each one of those products, as far as we're concerned. So how does this market work? This is a very large market, as you know. There's over 17,000 aircraft out there right now, not counting the military and we're expecting to double that in about 20 years. Now, it took us over 60 years to get to the 17,000 aircraft, and we're going to double it in 20 years. That's what I call fast and powerful growth. <coughs> the repair business is about uh, $40 billion, and the ECS portion of it is about $3 billion, so it's about 8%. Now, of that $3 billion, what is our market share? Our market share happens to be what we call the third-party provider. It's about <coughs> about a billion dollars, 980, arguably a little bit more, a little bit less. We are trying to target, obviously, the OEM, simply that's because we know that's where the customers' pains generally are generated. They certainly have problems here as well. So what is the market? The market is essentially made up of about 12 players worldwide. Um, those 12 players, three of them are the original manufacturers, the Honeywell, the Airbus, and the um, Hamilton Fund Stand, or United Technologies. The existing repair centers have been in place for 20 to 30 years. They are not no modern, nor are they very competitive. And that's essentially where we can be very strong. Comair, just an example, most of you know it as Delta. Uh, Comair essentially had a choice of a whole bunch of people that they can work, do business with, including their own people. Instead, they send the stuff to us. Sign the long-term agreement to do the work. Why are there so few people? This is a very powerful niche market. If you don't have the contacts, if you don't have the suppliers, if you don't know how the process works, if you don't know how these parts, where you're going to get these parts, you might as well not play. That's where we are. It's barriers to entry. Not very many people come in there. <clears throat> so what does the customer think? We physically went out and talked to the customers. I talked to the customers personally. The guy says to me, I want people that can do things quickly. I want people that can do it cheaper. I want people that can do it consistently. That's what the customer wants. That's exactly what he said to me. Exactly what we did. Our simple, powerful solutions to that, in fact, yielded faster turnaround, probably half the time that the market is giving. That's a total unfair advantage. Very few people can capture that kind of an advantage. Predictable pricing. We change our process. We know what parts we're going to change beforehand simply from historic data. Therefore, we can actually predict what it's going to cost us and consistent performance. We are a metrics organization. We're driven by numbers. People's whims don't really matter. Our company is built up so far with uh, six primary investors, an SBA loan that we personally backed, and about $1.4 million, $1 million so far. We started operations in 05. Our principals are over 100 years of experience. That's, uh, there's about six of us in there. Um, <laughs> most of it is customer contacts. 
That's my stuff. If you haven't figured it out by now with the white socks, I'm an engineer. Um, <laughs> most of my years have been uh, spent on the shop floor. Why is that important? Because when I go talk to a customer about a problem statement, that customer knows that my answer is shop floor. I've actually touched hardware. There's my hand, there's my fingernails, there's dirt there. These guys know who I am and they know what I'm going to do. That's why it's so important. But in addition to being an engineer, I've also ran businesses before. I ran a repair center before it doubled the sales. Helped companies like um, Health and Fun Strand evaluate acquisitions. So I'm no stranger to the business, neither is the rest of my team. This is the rest of my team. I know they're a scary bunch, but shut up with them a little bit. <coughs> this guy's got the toughest job. He has to deal with the government all the time. That's the FAA. Um, Steve, <coughs> our sales and marketing guy, because when it all comes down to, somebody has to take the story to the customer and say, I can make this part for you. That's essentially how we sell products. Steve's got a roll of decks bigger than his Texas head. You can't figure out these decks. At any rate, this guy has worked with OEMs before. He's worked with the largest repair companies out there. Steve picks up the phone and calls up the guy from his Rolodex and says, Hey, Jim, I've got a group here, top notch, that I want you to, to take a look at. Can we have lunch and talk about it? That's basically why we think we can actually reach the market directly. Of course, we expect that we're going to bring some more people on board as soon as we have our funding. We certainly have our uh, board of directors and we have advisory board, just like uh, we're a C corporation. Uh, this is a part of our unfair advantage to um, somebody like the OEM. See all these machines right here? The OEM has one box that does all these parts, that does all these things. But imagine that if I'm doing, if I'm doing a part, the OEM has to actually wait. He can do one part at a time. I can do three at the same time. I'm not the only guy that's really proud of our shop. The FAA thinks that we're top notch as well. In fact, their comments speak for themselves. A couple of months after started operations, overall, the Federal Wall Magazine actually did articles on us. I invite you to read them before you invest in us because that will give you an idea of who you're dealing with. So where are we today? We've completed our proof of concept. We essentially, at this stage, we're doing thermal switches and we're doing part of the heat exchangers. Those are some of the components of environmental control. I'm looking for money so I can finish up the heat exchangers and introduce valves. Lots of dollars in the valves business. There's more valves on an aircraft than there's passengers, each one of them for $3,000. What are we looking for? We're looking for about $500,000. Most of that is going to be in hard assets, equipment and tooling. Our sales projections based on that number. This is where we are today. You can see where our break-even point is, and you can see essentially it's a very modest, slow growth. This is where we would be with that additional money. We buy machinery to do valves and additional heat exchangers. We start doing 737 aircraft. You know how many of those there are? 8,000 of those worldwide. We have a faster time to break even and we actually <coughs> accelerate sales. Incidentally, uh, this is $2 million worth of sales a year. It's not a, it's not a, a bad thing. And of course, that's about 30% profit. How, are we gonna, how do we get there? Well, customers told Steve and myself directly. Start doing 737. I've got parts waiting. I want to send them to you. They are actually anxious for us to send them parts. Introduce valves and we'll do that with you as well. What's our exit? Strategic buyout to an OEM. I've done that work myself for the OEMs before. I know what the buyers are looking for. So naturally I'm positioning the company in that light. This is a market that's really <coughs> worth looking into. I know everybody's looking for the next dot com or the next boom, but this is very solid. It's very consistent, always there. Even during the 9-11 times, the repair business is very solid. This is very consistent. Here's a company you can actually go match up and look at it. Um, started in 2000, in 2000 with $400,000. Their sales in 2004 were 10 million. Similar market, similar challenges, similar establishment. In fact, I expect ourselves to do better because we have fewer competitors than they do and we have slightly larger market. Large markets, tight, controlled, few players. This is us. <coughs> Looking for a financial partner. Thank you for your time.
Let's have some questions. So just real quick, the, the deal terms again are what's the raise and what's the... We're looking, we're looking for 500. And that how much of the company? Uh, that actually, I believe that's probably an early for our conversation, but we have an established valuation of about 3 million today. Okay. We're, we've sold shares on that. So. I wasn't trying to that's trick you. I was that's just that's <laughs> no, I, I, I would, that's why I answered it. Okay, I'm great. pretty straightforward on most of my answers. Questions? I have two questions yep. that are related. But first of all, if I understood correctly, the five hundred thousand dollars was going to be used primarily for equipment purchases. Yeah, about half of it is going to be for machinery. We're going to buy. Uh,